Let me tell you something. If a drug dealer can bring me to Islam, a Muslim who sold drugs as a profession can bring me to Islam, no one has an excuse. No one has an excuse whatsoever. Whatsoever. The only thing he did was he knew he wasn't qualified, so he didn't tell me about what he didn't know. He told me where to go to get the right information. He made sure I went somewhere where I could get the right information. So there is no excuse for us. And as a side note, I'm going to tell you something. No, I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. Number three, number three, these people are ignorant. They are all jahan. They're ignorant. Right? This is these dirty kufar. I don't even want to touch them. We don't even get near them. They're all stupid and ignorant. I'm not going to go around fighting with people all day long to try to give them this pill. How do we know? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know what Allah wishes for a person? Has Allah given you that depth and breadth of knowledge that you know what is in the hearts of people? Can you look in them and see their breasts? There was one companion who thought like this. He was chasing a man up a tree to kill him. And the man said, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. And he killed him anyway. And he told the Prophet وسلم, what happened. And the Prophet got very angry and said, Did you cut open his chest and examine his heart to see if he was sincere? We have no right to judge what the people will do. We have no right to judge what the people will do. If we had people like Umar ibn al-Khattar who was so ignorant and so backwards and so gone that he was ready to take the life of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and Allah decided that day to give him hidayah, then no one is, is, is without. No one is too far gone. No one is too far gone. No one is too out there. No one is too crazy. No one is too ignorant to be given this message of the Islam. We need to do our job. We need to do our job. Because let me tell you why. Islam is an amana. It is a trust. This deen is a trust. Allah says it is a trust when He says that we offer this trust. What is that trust? That trust is al Islam. The free will between choosing the right and wrong and worshiping Allah. Allah said He offered this trust to the heavens and the earth and they refused it. But mankind, they accepted it and they themselves were wrong unto themselves. It is a trust. Islam is a trust. What is the, what is the key thing about trusts? Amanas, they will be questioned about. Everything that is a trust, Allah will question you about on the day of judgment. And know for sure that Islam is a trust. Allah will ask you how you dealt with Islam, whether you lived up to its obligations and its fulfillments and its laws and its regulations, and what did you do about those who didn't have it. What did you do? What did you do? Because Allah says very clearly, Allah gives us a command in the Quran. It's a command. It's explicit. Call into the way of your Lord with wisdom and with fair preaching and discourse with Him in a way that is best. It is a command from Allah, so we will be questioned about this. How are you going to feel on the Day of Judgment when your neighbor whom you knew for 10, 15, 20 years, the man that you did business with, your business partner, your co-worker, whom you never told them about Islam, when Allah resurrects them and they see you, but maybe, maybe they see you and tell you, you know what, Ahmed, you knew me for 20 years. You knew me for 20 years and you never ever told me there was going to be a day like this. You never even warned me. You never warned me. You never even mentioned it to me. You never told me there was an Allah that I should worship. You never told me that Allah wanted me to live my life according to Islam and there would be a day that I'll have to answer for my deeds. I'm going to complain to Allah about you. They will complain to Allah about this Ummah. They will. Because there's no more prophets to come. They're going to complain. They can't complain that Allah didn't send them a messenger. Because Allah did send them a messenger. Muhammad sallallahu is rahmatul lil alameen. But he's gone. His words have stopped coming. We have them just contained in the Quran and the Sunnah. The words of Allah azawajal in, in, in the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So who does that responsibility fall on now? Us. So we will be questioning. These people will complain that all these Muslims, 1.2 billion of them in the world, 1.5 billion of them in the world, and none of them told me anything about Islam. I probably met 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe 100 of them in my lifetime. And not a single one of them took the time to just say, look, here's the pill that if you take it, you will not suffer anymore in this life, nor in the next life. Everything will be gone. 
In the next life you will be pleased. And Allah will be pleased with you. We don't take this opportunity and do this. We don't fulfill the commands of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he said in his final farewell sermon, what did he say? He said, convey, convey this message to those that are not here. For verily it may be that the people who hear me last may understand me better than those who are here with me today. And then what did he say? I want to tell you the whole story, we don't have time. Then what did he say? He pointed to the heavens and he said, Oh Allah, bear witness that I have indeed conveyed your message. And then what happened? What happened? Allah revealed a verse in the Quran that said what? This day have I perfected your religion for you. And have I completed my favors upon you? And I have chosen for you Islam as your deen. Allah completed this entire deen of, to humanity. The entire deen, his entire way of life for humanity was completed upon the statement of the, of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to convey the message, to convey it. This is how weighty and important this message is. And before our Rasul sallallahu made this statement, Allah revealed to him a verse saying that, O Prophet, convey my message. And if you do not convey the message, you have not conveyed my message at all. Meaning that this, the farewell sermon was so important that if our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa left it out, he, he failed as a prophet. So it was very important what he said. And his last statement was to convey this message. This is a job. It is a job. It is, a, it, it is an obligation of every single Muslim to give Islam. Da'wah in this time and situation is far behind according to all um, the majority of the ulama. Da'wah in Allah and that calling to Allah is da'wah is far kifaya in the general sense. In the general sense. That means that if there's enough people doing it in a, in a good manner, in a, in a good enough way, that it can be said that the message of Islam is being spread properly, then perhaps the rest of the people can do what they need to do. But we know that's not happening, so automatically it falls to being a far ayn obligation. But when Islam is under attack, when the message of Islam is under attack, when, the, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being uh, tarnished, His name and, his, and who He is is just being dragged in the streets, when the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his character is being tarnished and people are, are calling him all these awful and ridiculous names and our sisters are being abused and our brothers are being killed and slaughtered throughout the world, da'wah for sure is for dying. Without a doubt, there's no question to that matter. That calling people to tawheed and telling them the truth about Islam is our job. When we don't do it, I'm, I'm guaranteeing you, you we're in sin. We're in sin. We're accumulating sins day after day after day after day, abandoning this mission. But I don't want to just continue to scare you. I'm going to tell you the good thing, the good news, the good news about the best job in the world. And why it's the best job in the world. Have any of you ever heard of a pyramid business? This is my last thing and I'm done. How many, have any of you ever heard of a pyramid business? It's big in the States. I wish I had a board and I would show you. A pyramid business, I want you to just imagine this for me. Let's say you have a circle here, and that represents me. And let's say I'm selling water. I sell water. This is my business. And I get two people to start selling water for me, right? So now you have two lines and two more circles. I'm building a little triangle now. Now when those two people sell water, they make money. And guess who else makes money? I make money because I got them started. Now let's say those two people hire two more people. So now you have four lines and four circles at the bottom. Now the two people above them are making money off the water they sell and I'm making money off the water they sell. So now money is trickling up to me. And that's endless. That triangle will go down and down and down and there could be so many people selling water that I don't even have to leave my couch anymore. I could sit at home and just watch the bank uh, money roll in. Do you understand the concept now? This is a pyramid business. I get people involved and, and, and I just reap the rewards and benefits. You know that one is the best pyramid business that exists. The best pyramid business that exists. Why? Why? Because our Rasul sallallahu said in an authentic hadith that those who call to guidance, those who call people to guidance, receive the reward of the one who is guided. Without the reward of the guided one being lost. What does that mean? That means if I call someone to Islam, I give them the da'wah, I give them the good word, I give them the good news, and they accept Islam. Every single good action that they do, every single hasanat that they accumulate in this world goes on their scale and a duplicate one goes on my scale. So when they pray, it's like I prayed. If they get up in the middle of the night and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and qiyam wa layl, 
It's like I prayed, even if I'm asleep in my bed. And let's say that person calls two more people. Now he's getting the reward of the two people he called, and I'm getting the reward of all three of them. Because the initiation started with me. And that pyramid can go down and down and down and down. It's endless. Until one day you can stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. And you can see these huge mountain of deeds being brought. Huge! Let's say the first person you gave da'wah to became the next Yusuf Estes. The next Zakir Naik. The next person that goes across the globe giving da'wah and calling hundreds of thousands if not millions of people to Islam. Listen, and you die and on the Day of Judgment all of a sudden there's this huge mountain of deeds being brought. There's enough deeds for like 50 lifetimes. And you're saying to yourself, and you're telling Allah, oh, Ya Allah, what are these? Uh, this has to be a wrong. I, I could not, I, I couldn't do enough deeds to do this in a lifetime. There is no way I could have done this. And then Allah will remind you about that day you talked to that young man about Islam. You remember that, that day on the bus? You remember that day at the coffee shop? You remember that day at work that you told that man about Islam? He did all of this for you. This is the reward for what you have done. And because of that, you could never do enough bad deeds. Never, never, never do enough to overcome what is being done for you. This is the best business. This is the business of Hassanet. There is no better business than you're putting away deeds that do not, de do not deteriorate. Wealth and money and accumulations in this, home, in this world, they fade away. They fade away. The wealth that is here is the same wealth that was here when Allah created the world, right? Nobody is taking it with them. Nobody is taking it with them. And on the last day, what does Allah say? Our Rasul Wasallam said that Allah will take the heavens and the earth and He'll just roll it up and hold it in His hand and say, where are the kings and the, and, the, and the wealthy of the world today? And He'll just make it into nothing. Nothing! That's the reality of His life. But good deeds, good deeds, they don't go away. They, never, they, they are never ending. They're, ne they're everlasting. So this young man who gave me da'wah in 1998, he was a Muslim who sold drugs. He's a Muslim who sold drugs. He was not a good Muslim at all. He, I, he prayed and that was about it. I used to see him pray. I didn't know what the heck he was doing. But he was not a good Muslim at all. But you know what I always say? I always make du'a to Allah. That if he, I don't know what happened to him. I, Allah, I don't know. He went to jail before I accepted his son. I think the day I accepted the day three days before. I always make dua to Allah, and this may be true, that if he dies with la ilaha illallah in his heart, and obedience to Allah and his messenger, I hope that what I can do in my life, and what the other people whom I have helped come to Islam can do in their life, I hope that we can do more good deeds than he can ever do, bad deeds in a lifetime. Because I hope that he can stand before Allah on the Day of Judgment and be forgiven because of what I can try to do. And I hope that he can be reminded, remember that one day in your home that you told that young man to go to that mosque? That erased every bad deed you've ever done in your life. What, what kind of business is this? When I first learned about this business, I said, what? This is, I'm in, I'm in. Where do I sign? Where do I sign? Sign me up. This is the business to be in. Wallahi, this the, even if there's a chance that it can cause me to be forgiven for everything that I've done, that's a chance I'm willing to take. That is a chance I'm willing to take. This is the reality of calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has placed in it rewards immeasurable. Immeasurable. There is no greater reward you can get possibly than this. Even though we know that the greatest deal our Rasul said was to struggle physically on the battlefield for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you lose your life in that, that's the greatest. You can't do anything better than that. How do you know that someone you call to Islam might not do that for you? How do you know that three people you call to Islam might not do that for you? SubhanAllah. There's no end to this. It's like you're living ten lives at the same time and all of them are doing good deeds. This is the business to be in, brothers and sisters. This is the greatest job on the planet. And the last thing I'm going to tell you, I know I said I was done.